2022. I would like to start expressing my gratitude to the organizing committee of the In Our Nature sessions of the CIFA conference 2022. I would like to start my presentations focusing on the topic of novel approach of landscape planning for conservation of archaeological and natural resources for countries ecological integrity and socio-economic development with special referral to Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan experience. First of all, I would like to start from the introductions. Sri Lanka is an island which is in the South Asia with rich biodiversity and high density of archaeological monuments and heritage. The most important identification is that the dry zone of the country has covered by the secondary in origin dry forest which was originated from the 12th century AD due to the ancient political transformation. Therefore, the most of the historical and archaeological heritage and cultural debris are located in the dry forest area because of the past kingdoms and habitational sites were considered of this region. On the other hand, the other important archaeological site which, which are dated back to the six, uh, 0.6 million years ago and belongs to the prehistoric era are also located in the wildlife protected areas in southern Sri Lanka. I think you can see some of these pictures are available in these slides. Not only that, some of the important uh, historical monuments are also available in the inside of protected areas, sometimes as living archaeological monuments. For instance, it is clearly there, clearly mentioned that the Buddhist monasteries also can be identified like living archaeological monuments in Sri Lanka. So, however, the conservation and development practices a few decades, last few decades, what happens, the different aspect. So, all these development and conservation practices are conduct, conducted by the Department of Wildlife Conservation and the Department of Forest Conservation. But the issue is all these development and conservation practices are conducted except the relationship between the archaeology, Department of Archaeology and Central Cultural Funds which are the custody of the conservation of conservation of archaeological and heritage in the current Sri Lanka. So, this issue we have already identified before starting our project and our program very clearly. The World Bank funded ecosystem conservation and management project was started from 2016 for achieving four main components. But under this topic, I wish to focus on my explanations to component one, which is pirate landscape planning and management, because it is directly affected to this our presentations. So also I would like to mention here, I also attach to this project as a social development officer and research officer as well as Mr. Gunavadana, the second author of this presentation was served as a chief consultant of this component. So based on Mr. Gunavadana's experience and my experience, we are developed these presentations to this conference today. So, mainly we have completed the report to the World Bank missions to starting and implementing new projects 
based on our reports. Sometimes these projects will be implemented near future after the approval by the World Bank mission. So, you can see there are four uh, components including this brochure and the first component is the pilot landscape planning and management. So, under these components, we have selected two sites from covered by the dry zone and also wet zone. But today I am going to explain under this presentations the dry zone experience. In this map, you can see the first pilot pro project area that we have selected based on the subject expert committee which was covered by the different disciplines including archaeological heritage management also. So, assisting on the expert committee recommendations, the site was selected from the northeastern Sri Lanka, northeastern part of Sri Lanka, covered by the Hurulu Kaudulla Forest Reserves and Habarana and Somavatiya Wildlife Sanctuaries. Not only that, it has covered by, by the three administration districts with agricultural lands, urban, semi-urban and villages are also coastal margins. I think in the north, mar north part of these regions you can see the coastal margins and other areas covered by the forest and other urban, semi-urban and village areas. According to this map, you can see very clearly the number of artificial water bodies such as major and small scale tanks. Water canals are available in these regions. Also, natural water bodies and other agricultural and forest land also available in this map. The most important aspect is number of water bodies, the artificial water bodies are already abandoned. But due to the ancient agricultural practices in these regions, this kind of cultural landscape was developed during the different historical periods. However, the reforestation of the 12th century AD, this civilization was abandoned. Now all these monuments and cultural activities has ruined. But anyway, we have selected this area to implement our pilot projects, including with the different aspect. There are five strategies that we have proceeded under these components to achieve our objects. I think you can see these strategies very clearly. The first one is multi-stakeholder platform across the decision-making levels, including with multi-stakeholders from different backgrounds and covered with the different aspects. The second one is shared understanding leading to cooperation for innovations. The third one is collaborative planning and ownership of the process. The fifth one is the effect Fourth one is effective implementations, integrated and inclusive level. The last one, the monitoring, evaluation and learning. This is the main strategy that we have already applied for understanding and creating our proposals. Now I would like to explain you about our two steps. We have developed two steps under this project as planning and action. The first one you can see the planning level. The second one is you can see the action level. The first actually for the planning process as the first stage of these pr proposals or a project we have developed four steps. The first 
step is strategy. The identification of strategies, not only one, the different strategies we, we have already identified. But this is the planning process we have already completed. Now we have to complete it action level. But I would like to explain first what is planning level that we have implemented, that we have used for these proposals. First one is strategy. Number of strategies we have used. The second one is results based monitoring and evaluations. There are two kind of monitoring and evaluation process. The first two step is proposal level monitoring and evaluations. Results based monitoring and evaluation that we call results based monitoring and evaluation. But second one is completely project monitoring and evaluation. First of all, I would like to explain results based monitoring and evaluation that is based on the uh, our data the collected data for the completing proposal the second one is re the third one is operations the operations is that is under the planning level operations how we are going to do what are the main ideas that we are going to implement it under this project? We would like to propose these are the operations that we are going to conduct it under this project. Fourth one is management. We would like to proceed the process of the management. Lead who are the, who will do the leaderships, success factors, intercultural com intercultural activities and intercultural cooperations. We would like to, uh, we have already completed this part under the proposal level. So, the next one is actions. But the action will be starting, action will be uh, proceed under the, after the, after starting the project. So, it has three steps. The first one is implementations. Based on the proposal, the project's components will be implementing in future. The second one is management screening. This is this the management screening will be a one uh, institute or a multi institute. Sometimes it would be based on the uh, approved proposals. But we have already pro, uh, uh, proposed the multi institutional uh, management screening process. So, last one is monitoring and evaluation. The monitoring and evaluation, I, I have already mentioned, there are two types of monitoring and evaluation. But in these steps, we, in this step, the last step, this is the process which is which will be after starting the pro, pro, proposal, uh, the projects, how we do the monitoring and evaluation process. Sometimes it would be changed based on the future experience here i would like to uh, explain to you the key planning interventions and components there are 21 components we have we have already identified identified based on the uh, available data in the proposal level but i would like to focus on here only few and key themes of these presentations. So, the natural ecosystems, threatened areas, environmental sensitive areas, and protected areas, we have identified firstly. The secondly, the agricultural development and farming system. Third one is most important one in this presentation, the cultural and historical heritage. Others are also very important aspect, but I am not going to focus on these presentations, all these things. I would like to focus on uh, first two things to these presentations today. This, this is uh, the common structure that we have identified in historical areas of our country. We call the catch case system. This system is one of the most important water management practices which was started from the ancient civilizations in our country. So, under these components, we try to understand how this practice was con considered 
in this area and the and the possibility of identify isolated archaeological and historical monuments in this region so because these sustainable practices would be restructure is very important because it would be a it would be a successful practices that we can implementing based on this project because it has covered different aspect i think you can see there are a number of structures are available in this picture the first one is catchment of the tank the forest area if we want to use the tank we have to protect the catchment of the forest of catchment of the tanks we call the forest area right so after that based on the catchment and the forest area the tag will be continued and after that or oh, based on the tag there are a number of ferry fields and other fields also available in the ground level so finally this water directly connect into the water streams sometime it would be natural sometime it would be artificial but all artificial canals are also con conducted based on the contours without any damages to the natural environment this is the ancient practices on the other hand the there are two cultural structures also available in this picture the first one is temple as the religious aspect other one is villagers house this is the habitational area but the issue is the most important thing is there is no any damages from the temple and villages or habitational sites to the natural environment as well as agricultural or water management structures the, according to the expert of these subjects there are two main aspects that we have already identified that is water conservations or management and also the soil conservations and management that is most important aspect the foreign uh, for the other important aspect that we have already identified the structures in this area that is already abandoned but the important thing is there are a number of archaeological and historical monuments are located surrounding this structure that's mean we can clearly identify this system was happening during the historical era so key intervention proposed within the lmp lmp means landscape management plan plan the diversification of heritage has potential values in providing more opportunities to the people for engaging in conservation and tourism make tourism making as an additional revenue resources second one is immunate all archaeological and cultural locations in pas as well as public areas and declared as archaeological protected sites widening and strengthening of the protection network of the additional director and provided maximum protections for the all important sites the last one is linkage of all such sites to wider tourism sector and design community managed models based on performance based incentive incentivizations conclusions there are two uh, steps uh, two two focus fo focus area that i would like to conclude my um, presentations so first one is based on the natural aspect the second one is based on the cultural aspect the first one landscape level planning provided better solution for completing lands claims declaring of conservation and development songs that make optimum from the protected area governance and management that is for natural aspect the second one is cultural aspect archaeological heritage should be one of the main component of this both conservation and development proposals in the world so finally i would like to propose additions to these two conclusions if this sifa conference would be developed a final 
solutions or the pilot proposal document i would like to propose it is possible to, to propose to the funding agencies the reputed funding agencies in the world if we can propose or attach to the archaeological officer that uh, with uh, with uh, uh, qualifications it would be better to protect all archaeological monuments in the world under the development practices this is my final uh, uh, solutions and conclusions thank you very much